aquí estoy de nuevo. Chicos, cuando estamos estudiando español, uh, la, una de las primeras, one of the first classes, which, <laughs> one of the first classes that we learn is the alphabet, the Spanish alphabet. I know that you studied at some point in your high school, and I have to tell you this, I am not gonna teach you the alphabet so you pronounce those sounds. You have them here. You are able to listen to them in your textbook, in your ebook. D. Let's begin with. A. B. C. D. E. F. G. H. I. J. K. L. M. N. Ñ. O. P. Q. R. S. T. U. V. V doble. Nosotros le decimos normalmente la B, B, and look at my lips, we don't make a difference, see, ¿sí? between V o B, B, ¿sí? V doble. O doble B también. X. Y. Or Y. And the last one. Zeta. And you see that here on page eight of the textbook, you have a description on how, uh, about the letter, okay? I, I'll let you study this on your own. I'm teaching today the alphabet, so you control the filter of English. What is this? When we pronounce, when, when I speak English, you feel my accent and you feel that my tendencies are different from the ones of those English speakers because my English is filtered by my Spanish. All I produce comes from the structure that my brain has acquired, that, that what I have in my brain about pronunciation and it's mainly Spanish, so I have to adjust. I do not sound like a native speaker of English because my, my Spanish filters my English. In your case, your English filters the Spanish pronunciation. So what I'm gonna teach you now is how to control in four specific sounds, how to control the filter of English so, so you are not misunderstood when you produce sounds in, in Spanish. And for that, I have this PowerPoint to show you. First, <clears throat> First, let me tell you that, yes, the two languages have very similarities. See the two languages? If you see these letters, what is missing in, the, in this one? What is missing? La E. So, so inteligente, atractivo. La I, problema, la M, fabuloso, la U, teléfono, falta la F, el diccionario, la R, alérgico, falta la G, supersticioso, we're, we're missing, falta la S, religioso, falta la O, interesante, falta la N, atlético, falta la L, Importante, falta la M. Responsable, falta la A. Generoso, falta la N. Sentimental, falta la T. 
impaciente, falta la P, extrovertido, falta la D, y, eh, in, introvertido, falta la B. You read these 18 words and you are able to recognize them because they are cognates, they are cognados. So those are words that are very similar in their pronunciation and writing in the two, between the two languages. So you are able to recognize. Notice that these words, even uh, the ones that you didn't know, now you are able to guess because English is telling you, um, is telling you, okay, there is something similar. Your brain recognizes them, them and is able to guess. Cognados, see? So guess, guessing based on uh, the fact that you are a speaker of another language is uh, a tool that we have to understand what, what we are reading or what we are listening, okay? So let's continue working on the sounds. Let's begin with the letter G, la letra G. See, um, I'm gonna pronounce these sounds because um, you, English is gonna take you to pronounce them in a different way and skip some uh, important factors that are relevant to the Spanish language. So let's begin with this one. Gato, guerra, guitarra, gorila, laguna, águila, Guevara, Pague, Gitano, Página, Religioso, General, Germán, Generoso. Okay? The first thing that we have to pay attention, beginning with the last three, General, Germán, and Generoso, is that Spanish doesn't go for with the G sound that you have in general uh, uh, or generals. See? So the sound for Spanish would be g, g or ha ha, okay? So we have religioso, that's the ha ha sound, or guitarra, gato, is the g g sound. So that's one thing to identify so we control the filter of English. There is no G sound when we have the letter, la letra G, okay? Now, that's one piece. Second piece, we have to group them. Did you notice that gato, gorila, laguna, and let me take my pen here to um, mark them. So gato, laguna, gorila, They have the g, g sound, ga, go, gu, see? Ga, go, gu, they have the ga sound. Now let's change color to see the ha, ha sound. Look at that, let me go with blue. Gitano, here we have gitano, same one, religioso. Pagina, see we have the same one, see? General, perfecto. So he, and we have G in general, G in German, and G in generoso. See? Those are the he he sound. See? He he sound. But notice that we have a different, a, a third group. We have a third group here. We have here Guerra, Guitarra, Aguila, Guevara. And pague. So those those are not the gu sound, and you are hearing ge. See, what we have is the combination of g with e that has in the middle the letter u, and the combination, the same combination with i. So g u i g u E, they don't belong to the g, g sound, they don't belong to the h, h sound. But to assimilate to the, the norms of the language, the U is inserted in between them, so you are able to pronounce them in one of the two groups, and it's the, the g, g group. So the same way that gato, well, the combination G-U-E is trying to find 
it's an assimilate and it goes to the g -g pronunciation similar to gato. Got it? So the rule will be this. When you have G with E, is pronounced he. But the, the uh, anomaly, The anomaly comes when we ha we we need to pronounce to get it to the to the g -g sound. So combination G U E combination G U I, the U doesn't sound and you pronounce it with the g, -g sound. So it goes to the G A G O and G U group that way. So gato, guerra, guitarra, gorilla, and laguna, and that they go back to the norm, see? If the U is not in the middle, then you go for the other group, he, 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 he. So religioso with the G-I, see? Religioso or G-E, Herman, see? As soon as you see the U in between, it goes to the G, -g sound, okay? And that way you don't say gue because that, that, that combination, you don't probably, that U is mute, that U is invisible. Got it? So this is what happens in the in the pronunciation of G when you try to pronounce it in English filters U, taking you to general or generous. And you would say generoso, and that does not exist. You have to say generoso, okay? Or the other tendency that English would take you is to pronounce the U when you have the combination of G-U-E or G-U-I. It would, English would tell you gui or gue, and that doesn't exist, okay? That combination is make, is pushing you towards the pronunciation of ge and gi, which is the norm. Second, second uh, letter that we have to pay attention is the this this sound c s and z okay so if you are pronouncing uh pronouncing as somebody from spain you would make a difference like corazón zapato but in general terms all the latin american uh, countries that we pronounce all these three together but there is one, there is, there are some exceptions where the sound is different. So let's begin with saying that S is going to be S wherever it is, and it's not going to be vibrating, see? So when we have says, every letter that we spot here, every sound that S is going to sound says, somos, got it? Uh, and all the letters, so sa, sabor, says, siéntate, son, suyos, or su, those are combinations that I'm trying to make with the letter su, the letter S. All of them are gonna sound S. Let's switch to uh, letter C. There, here we have to split them, see? So we say doce, we say cena, we have the C-E, and we have cacique, we have C-I, okay? C, E, and C, I are gonna sound as an, as an S sound. Like the same way you say says, you say doce. C, E, and C, I. Now, what happens when you have C with A, C with O, and C with, um, where am I missing A, A, E? C with A, C with, oh, that's my funny. Oh my God, sorry. Um, this, the sound from the C changes to k k k as a K, okay? So we have capital, and we see here, we see here, capital, or C-O, cocodrilo. So K, co, see? C, C, and then Q, like cuando. Let me write it here. When you have this combination, I'm not talking about the A, I'm talking about the U, see? Q, cuando, it's gonna sound sound, see? So, ca, co, cu, and the other one are se, si. So you know that when you see combination C, E, C, I, then you pronounce S, the letter C. 
when you see the combination ka ko ku, then you use the, the sound k. Okay? Now let's go to the third one. There is another sound that is produced as a k, but it's not a c, it's q. The letter q. Here you have it. K and Kien. And those are the only two that happen in the language. You see that do not pronounce que or cui. No, because that U is mute as the one that you saw with the G. That Q tells you to pronounce K and to pronounce Kien. Ignore the letter U. And that's for the sound C, S, and Z. Remember, we don't, we pronounce for letter Z if, uh, if you hear uh, somebody from Spain, you're gonna hear corazón, but somebody from the rest of the Spanish speaking countries, they are gonna use pronounce an S, corazón, okay? Um, this will be practice if we were in a sign a classroom, but I am not, I'm going to the next sound, which is the P and the T, and let me find it for you, chicos. Okay, I'm not finding it, but I do have these sounds uh, in, in, uh, in front of you. What happens with these sounds, and I'm gonna just work on the first two, see, is that the letter T and the letter P are really different between uh, Spanish and English. When you go to pronounce something in um, Spanish, this sound T and the sound P, you will notice that they are very, very ex explosive and they are not in Spanish. So when you hear uh, to, uh, I'm gonna pronounce this, I'm gonna read this line that I have highlighted there in English, even though I'm reading in Spanish. I'm gonna use English pattern, that's what I'm doing. So I have, tu tia tula tiene 30 tortillas tostadas. See, if I had a microphone, that microphone would be boom, 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 boom. Because in English, this T sound is very explosive. Same thing, if you want to do it, um, you could test it with a piece of paper and you'll see that the, the sound, uh, would the, the, the air would make the paper move. Now let's do the P. Mi padre y mi primo Paquito practican con su profesor Pablo Perez. So if you are pronouncing, uh, trying to control your filter, um, your English filter, you have to soften as uh, these two sounds. The T, soften it, not get into the D as in David sound, but in between them. You have to soften that T. Do not pronounce tutia, but say tutia, okay? Tutia tula instead of tutia tula. Tiene treinta, tiene treinta tortillas tostadas. Tortillas tostadas. See, you see the difference. Now, if we pronounce the second line, you'll hear that, that instead of saying mi padre, you would say mi padre. Sometimes if I pronounce, if I'm saying something in English and it's a P sound, since I, since I don't produce the P as explosive as it should be in English, you guys, tend to, see, to think that I'm producing a B as in boy sound and not. It's just because it, my Spanish is filtering, the, filtering my production of the P sound. Well, you have to soften it to sound more uh, native-like and to sound, and not to miss, uh, confuse the one who's listening to you. So the line number two would be, mi padre y mi primo Paquito practican con su profesor Pablo Perez. ¿sí? And I invite you to practice all these other uh, lines. Yes, stop the video and practice Patricia Pineda and continue. Uh, um, the other one that I want you guys to practice since we already covered letter G is number six and number seven. So stop the video and practice on your own. This will help you improve your pronunciation and control your English filter in the Spanish language. Okay. Muy bien. I'm gonna keep those. And those are the four sounds on the consonant side that uh, you guys have to pay attention. Another thing you have to pay attention when you are producing sounds in Spanish is the vocales. A, E, I, O, U. Okay? 
Let's go there. We only have five sounds in Spanish with five with five letters. See, so we have um, here um, a a e o u. Let's play this rhyme that we uh, play when we were ch uh, little children in, in in our countries. A e e o u, arbolito de Peru. ¿Cómo te llamas tú? You can practice it now. You have to pronounce the A as that, A. There is not A as in table. There is not A as in apple. Uh, you have to say the A. The E is the one that elephant, elefante. That's the A, and it's only one. See, the E, the letter I for you, is only E, no I, or A. It's not short or not blended with, uh, with another sound, no. You have to say A, A, E. The O is not O, it's O, see? And the U is not U, as in music, it's U, okay? So, why is this important? Well, notice this. In this slide that I have here, I have uh, two columns. Look at that, the first one. When you pronounce mesa versus meses, you are producing two different words that mean two different things. Mesas is uh, two or three tables, while meses is January, February, so they are, those are meses, okay? So don't say, if you're trying, oh, in la, in la clase hay cinco mesas, and you pro, pro, produce the schwa sound, that to a, a Spanish speaking, a Spanish speaker would sound like meses, see? Señoras, or señoras, if you say señoras, is it señoras or señores that you're trying to produce? Because this make a, dif a big difference. Is it ladies or gentlemen? You have to, to make sure that you say to the ladies, señoras, and to the guys, señores, okay? No señoras, okay? no señoras. Señoras bonitas, uh, okay, that sounded like a masculine, uh, so you mix feminine and masculine there, it makes no sense. So you can create confusion if you don't control the filter of English when producing your vocabulary. Look at the next one, calor, color. What if you say color? Okay, ah, uh, tengo mucho color, see, tengo mucho color. That's the schwa sound that is pushing you to produce it into Spanish. Well, calor, it's hot in here. Or color, azul, rojo, verde, green, yellow. Those are colores, okay? So I'm going to stop there. Uh, look at the, we have emite and imite, pelar and polar, legar and lugar, gustar and gustar. See? So you say, no me gusta. Okay, you could be saying I'm, I'm spending or I like. Uh, um, so this is important. Uh, controlling the filter of English. Remember, I'm teaching this class not for you to be able to say A, B, C, but for you to be able to control the filter of English. Let's go back to what we have already learned. And here we have que, we have bueno. There you have it, ue, bueno, bien, quien, cien, Europa, aéreo, and hoy. These are combinations that in the beginning are difficult for you guys that I want you to practice. So if you can stop the video and, and pr pronounce them too, that would help you to get familiar. You get familiar with the pronunciation of Spanish from the beginning, okay? And hasta aquí, you guys, um, this is all the content that I have for you to produce um, the to produce the alphabet. When is it necessary to to know the alphabet and the letters? Well, if you are listening and I say uh, mi nombre es Carmen and you didn't get it, say cómo eh, cómo se escribe? How do you spell it? Cómo se escribe? Then you could say C A R M E N. Or when you are filling up documents or helping somebody fill out fill out documents, me, the pronunciation would, of the alphabet would help a lot. See, the alphabet knowing the alphabet would help you uh, get clarification and get the precision uh, um, on what you are trying to communicate. Now I am gonna go to um, my Spanish lab 
to show you the exercises that you'll be doing on on um, my Spanish lab. Same for the alphabet. Um, you guys have this one, las letras y las palabras. Let me show you. So here you have you have to match you have to match the Spanish letter with the word that contains that letter. So you see this sound, he. Which word of these contains he? See, we have señor, muy, verdad, López, luego, hasta, México, en qué? I'll give you the answer. For me, is luego, the one that has it. It has one of the two sounds of the letter he, g, 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 g and he, he, okay? So it has the g sound, go. So that's, that's one of the exercises you have to do with the alphabet. Second one, cities of the world, ciudades del mundo. And in this part, chicos, you will have to complete, you, you will have to give the name of each city that is spelled beside, below, see? So, se, let's see, se, let's make the capital, okay? Se, a, r, a, se, a, s. So we have Caracas, C A R A C A S, Caracas. That's what you, gonna, you guys are going to do. Let's do the second one. M A D R I D, Madrid. See, we discover names of cities uh, that way with the alphabet. Go ahead and complete that one. The next one is um, names, numbers. Let's view this exercise for you to complete. See? In this case, you have to listen uh, um, because the names in other languages might tell me names in English are a challenge for me. So I want you guys to practice names in Spanish. So you listen to the, the new Spanish uh, friends that you have, Spanish speaking friends, and you're going to be typing the names. Mi nombre es Juan. J. U A N Juan U A N and we have his name is Juan. That's what you're gonna do. So you have three more uh, people talking and telling their names and you're gonna be typing the names there. The coming exercise is the last one for today and uh cuáles son las letras. Okay. ¿Cuáles son las letras? Is the title of this exercise. Now, hear the sounds. H, A, S, T, A. So she said H, A, S, T, A. M, A, S, T, A. A, N, A, N, A. In the second, in the second part, you're going to write the other, the other part of the expression. Uh, that we use uh, to say hi and to say bye in Spanish, which is something that we just finished, okay? And you have only three pieces to complete there. I really want you to practice Spanish pronunciation of the alphabet because it will help you understand when somebody is speaking and it helps you uh, when you are writing, you know, how, you know what, what letters you guys are using. Okay, so far this is for the second piece of the day, the alphabet, these are tips and ideas on how to control the filter of English, okay? So go ahead, start working, chicos. Bye-bye. Gracias. God bless you.